Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Grindhouse. It's me, Groovy here. And today we're going to be talking about the newest installment in the MCU saga. <laughs> today I wanted to just drop a quick little spoiler free review of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, what did I think of this gonzo horror take? on MCU storytelling directed by my man, Sam Raimi. Well, in a word, I thought it was great. <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. I did really enjoy the kind of playful kind of energy that this film had. It had more of an adventurous tone to me as opposed to a horror tone. There were some horror elements in this film and a lot of it was kind of carried by Wanda's character throughout the film. She was pretty damn scary when this film decided to go there. And this film really did decide to go there. I was actually surprised how dark that this movie really got. I would have thought that they would have shied away from some of those elements, but they definitely went there when they had to. And I say kudos for them. Good for them for getting some blood on the claws finally, if you know what I mean. <laughs> But yeah, I thought this movie was fantastic. I did really like that adventurous tone, as I said, that I felt like it had. It definitely felt more of a vibe of something like the Spider-Man movies or Army of Darkness than it did of anything of like the earlier Evil Deads. So when people say that this is like a horror take on an MCU kind of movie, they're kind of saying kind of like horror adjacent. Like if you think that scary skeletons in a movie makes a movie a horror movie, and yeah, okay, you can call it a horror movie. But for someone that's seen a lot of extreme extreme horror movies. <laughs> I say that this has some light horror elements to it. And without getting into spoilers, I can't really be too more specific, but there is some stuff towards the end that I did think was super fucking cool. <laughs> As I said, Elizabeth Olsen was fantastic in this film. Benedict Cumberbatch, I feel like played Doctor Strange a lot better than he did in Spider-Man No Way Home here. But one of the negatives I would have to say for this story is I still feel like aside from helping the plot move along or having the plot revolve around him. <laughs> Doctor Strange doesn't seem like he's really doing too much in this movie. He's kind of like just moving on from his girlfriend and that's his character growth in this film, which is kind of weak, which when you compare that to Wanda's arc in this film, it kind of makes it seem like Doctor Strange is kind of like a co-star in a movie with his name on the title. You know what I mean? Like this is definitely a half sequel to WandaVision, make no doubt about that people. I wouldn't say that it's required viewing, but it's definitely going to help a little bit fill in the gaps. <laughs> Other characters I thought, I thought Benedict Wong did a fantastic job as Wong. I love Benedict Wong. <laughs> I liked him in Black Mirror. I liked him in What We Do in Shadows. I just like seeing him pop up in general. I say, bring it on, keep giving him roles. I love it. The America Chavez character, I could have taken her or left her. I felt like she was kind of more or less there just to kind of damsel and to kind of give Doctor Strange a sidekick so we can help humanize him a little bit more because that is kind of one of his kind of problems, I would say, with his depictions in the MCU currently. <laughs> and again, I was not sold on the romance between Doctor Strange and Christine Palmer in the first movie, and I'm still not sold on it. And this movie wasn't interested in trying to sell us that. It was trying to sell us him moving on. Aside from that, there are some great cameos in this film, but I feel like they are a little bit wasted. They aren't really integral to the film in the way that Spider-Man No Way Home's cameos are. These kind of feel like they're kind of tacked on. And with the way that things were kind of handled, I would also say that I feel like it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. So all in all, while I did love the feel of this movie, I did love the ride watching this. <laughs> I do feel like there were some bumps in the road that could have been smoothed out. And I feel like a lot of that probably had to do with the writing more so than the direction. But at the same time, people that make these films have to be able to work in that big MCU machine. They're just one little cog that helps keep things going. It's really hard to pin down exactly what went wrong with this film and where and who is responsible with it. Especially when I would say the majority of the project is very, very enjoyable. As I said, there were some hard horror elements to it here. We did get to see a little bit of that Sam Raimi flavor, but I don't think it was 
too in your face. It was just a little bit of that kind of slightly kind of mean spirited sense of humor sprinkled out here and there. And a couple of whip pans here that I thought definitely screamed Samurai. I mean, just a cute little notes here and there that I thought were just little nice touches that made me think I'm pretty sure that that was him. And because this is a Sam Raimi film, we're also treated to a quick little cameo from my man, Bruce Campbell. Not gonna drop any spoilers, but I will say, he's in there, baby. Oh yeah, he's in there. But that being said, I do think that this movie was a fun ride. I had fun watching it. I would definitely watch it again. But in the pantheon of Marvel films, I would have to say, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness would be on the bottom, and then above it, we would still have Spider-Man No Way Home, and then above Spider-Man No Way Home, we still have Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So while it's a quality film, it wasn't exactly breaking new ground, especially coming out after No Way Home. If this film would have come out before it, then this would have been mind blowing. But now it kind of feels like if we don't get some big cameos and all these Marvel features moving forward, it's going to be a little bit of a letdown. The other cameos, as I said, kind of seemed almost like they were kind of tacked on. They weren't really organic to the story. You know what I mean? Like they are in Spider-Man No Way Home and it just felt a little bit too artificial for my tastes. And of course, this being a big MCU CGI spectacle. There were some parts, especially when they were compositing CGI creatures together with actual human characters or a human character running away from something on a green screen. There were some points, especially with Wong fighting Gargantos at the beginning of the film and America Chavez being chased by unknown magical monsters. <laughs> I kind of thought that there were points where things didn't quite look quite right. But then other points when we were in a totally CGI environment, I thought things looked fantastic. At the beginning of the movie specifically, I thought it opened on a great kind of scene, has a bit of a cold open, and it gets you right into the beginning of the film. And I did really enjoy it. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Did you guys enjoy this film? Do you guys think that this is the best MCU film to date? Or do you think that this is just another piece of factory made MCU crap that they just kind of turned out, got a good director, put his name all on there to try to garner some good faith with the fans? You know what I mean? Was it one of those kinds of situations? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section as always. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay safe, stay classy, but no matter what you do, stay groovy people. We outie. Bye bye.